Hi, I'm Eli Bunyan. Welcome to this week's episode of Artopia. Today, Kelly Hansen, a seamstress from Ipswich, will be joining us at the desk. Later on, our crew will also spoke to a member of Ipswich Arts Council, where we talk community and finding the enjoyment of art. All that, right after this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grace Lofting. Joining us today is Kelly Hansen. Hi Kelly, how are you today? Not bad, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Um, so let's just jump straight in. Why did you start sewing? Oh, I just wanted to create. I, I just love the fact that you can get these little bits of fabrics together mm -hmm. and sew something and you yeah, make something. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. And there's a heap of different types of sewing. So what is kind of your main one? <gasps> It used to be quilting. I used to mm. love, love, love quilting. But um, more recently, it's it's clothing. So right. Yeah, okay. Women's attire, generally. Yeah. yeah so. And can you kind of explain to us the process of making women's attire? Ah. And what makes you different from other companies doing that okay, same thing? So I provide custom made to a design that fits you. Mm -hmm. So you get to choose from a selection of 10 garments that I, I have. You try on a size um, and then I make it fit to the way that is comfortable right. for you. You then choose the fabrics from a big selection of fabrics and I make it in the fabric that you want it to be wow, made in. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like, and you get to design buttons as well? Or uh, yeah, like yeah. That? So different notions that you can put on. So uh -huh. I have a suitcase of buttons. <laughs> so you get to put the buttons that you want on uh -huh. it rather than being forced to just buy standard yeah, of um, course. clothing. Yeah. I find I change my buttons all the time so yeah. that match what I actually want them to look yeah. like. Um, so how is the community of sewers in Ipswich for you? Lovely. They're just beautiful. Yeah. They're just beautiful people. That we just have such a lovely time. It's really just an excuse just to to get together with like minded people to create something, mm -hmm. to problem solve, both sewing and just have a nice little bit of a chit chat. A chit chat, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. And you do that over a cup of tea or something? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um and what do you aim with uh, what do you aim to do with your business? <sighs> I bet Basically, it's just to, to give the art of sewing to, to people. Mm. I want to empower people to just give them the knowledge so that they can go home and create themselves. Lovely. Just to give them a little bit of a gentle kickstart, just to help them overcome their fears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and so in saying that, do you teach? What ages do you kind oh of Oh, yes. So as well as making clothing uh, for custom made, I also teach. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I, I just do the teenagers and adults. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we have either a, a Saturday full day class or we have um, a weeknight six week program that we do. So oh. we cover a, a fair amount of the basic fundamentals of sewing yeah. to help you. Okay, beautiful. And that's for any age group on Saturday or throughout the week? Um, so at the moment, I'm not doing children. So okay. it's just, it's just um, Ad uh, adolescents mm -hmm. and, um, and adults, yeah. Beautiful, okay. And what should we be expecting out of those classes? What's the end product? Oh, the end product is to, to know the basics of to really getting to know your sewing mm -hmm. machine, how to use it, and what all of those buttons and levers really do. <laughs> totally. to They're to a bit confusing sometimes, a <laughs> bit overwhelming. <laughs> um, and then just to, to, to learn about different threads, about the different needles, and then learning about different fabrics. Mm how to sew a zipper, how yep. to sew buttons, and how to sew with stretch fabrics. Right, and there's a bit more difficulty yes, in stretch fabrics? they cause, yeah, a little bit more issues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and then we go into a bit of pattern reading as well, oh so lovely. that way we touch base with that so that we can, you feel a little bit more comfortable, or a lot more comfortable yeah. when you go home to so reproduce it teaching people how to do this by themselves. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's all we have time for today. It's been a pleasure for you to, uh, for you to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, 
You can find out more about Kelly's business, So, uh, so What Ipswich, on Facebook and her website, sowhatipswich.com.au. Oh, just .com. Um, up next, we chat with Glenn Smith, a member of the Ipswich Arts Council, in his little shop of antiques, The Vintage Advantage. Take a look. Hi, I'm Glenn Smith. I'm local Ipswich artist. I've been practicing my art now for about 15 years. I'm currently the president of the Ipswich Arts Connect. Last year I achieved uh, Ipswich Citizen of the Year and that was mainly due to all the community work we do within the arts. From that we've actually done three community events which have won Australia Day Awards which included working with people with disabilities, Indigenous and the environment. What's my inspiration for my art? Well, I actually love doing still lives. As you can tell by this shop, I've been a bit of a collector all my life. So all the items around me, in my household, in my kitchen, they become my art. I love still lives. And I think that's probably been my best thing is traditional style painting still lives. I also love doing the environment. I love birds, I love nature. So they tend to mingle in with my art. So I'm doing still lives with birds and gum leaves. Yeah, it's just something that I think it's my own personal passion is also what I put into my art, as well as I love experimenting. So lots of different things, mixed medias and acrylics. What do I do when I'm planning my next painting? Well, actually that's the most difficult thing I have is deciding what to paint next, especially when you've been painting for quite a while. So generally I look around the kitchen or my shop and I find objects and I put them all out on the table and I sort them into a composition and I take about 50 photographs and I work from photographs. Unlike most artists who tend to sketch things out and do from drawings, I tend to work directly from photo images. The lighting doesn't change. I find that easier. Yeah, so for me it's all about having an image to um, copy from and that's usually photographs. I get asked quite often how to become an artist, how to get your work out there and with each person it's quite an individual choice on how you, how you see yourself as an artist and what you want to achieve from your artist um, career. For me it's all about community um, so I join a lot of groups, there's the Ipswich Art Society, there's Arts Connect um, and with them it's you get to be with other artists and you learn and achieve um, what you want in your goals. They're also really good stepping stones to further your career. Uh, competitions, Ipswich Art Awards, Ipswich Show, um, very good for stepping stones as well. You get your work out there, you get your name out there and um, take the criticism, take the judging, um, but don't take it personally. It does come down to just putting your name out there, taking on as much as you can, working with the community, um, getting involved with as many groups as you, you can, and um, don't sell yourself short. Uh, just keep practicing, getting, um, as I said, involved with groups, and eventually the career path will happen for you. You will decide where you want to go, what you want to do, but um, whatever you do, don't give up. Just keep going and going and going. Don't let other people decide the path that the career that you want to take you make the decisions and you go for it okay when do you become confident in your art well that's pretty easy the answer for me is never you're always doubting yourself you always don't feel good enough but i think the thing is you just at some stage have to just learn to believe in your art um, Stop judging yourself compared to other people because that's a really big downfall for most artists. Just enjoy what you do and take on criticism but don't get downhearted by other people because they'll be quite harsh and just paint because you love painting. Well, that concludes this episode of Artopia. Yes, and I believe the next one is the last one. <laughs> yes, it is. And that will be where the series ends, unfortunately. Well, regardless, hopefully the show has given some insight for our viewers and gets them interested in starting their own thing. But of course, we wouldn't have done it without our wonderful guests sharing their stories. Yes, but there's still just a little more left to go. We'll see you next episode for the very last time. Bye, Bye for now. now. Oh, my God.